Hey everybody, Invisible Katana here doing my top 10 list for Sony's E3 2016 press conference. Uh, getting right into it, number 10 was actually Call of Duty. Not that big of a fan of Call of Duty, but I didn't even realize it was Call of Duty until it was probably two or three minutes in, mostly because it was just walking and talking and they were just on a ship. And then when they actually started getting into the combat, I realized, like, oh, this is the new Call of Duty game. Because I completely forgot about the trailer where they went to space and they were actually fighting. So, it actually looked pretty cool. We got to see the grapple thing where he needs someone in the face, broke the mask, they died. Um, zero G combat, at least a little bit of it towards the end when they like opened the hatch up, which I also thought was cool. And, like, you know, it sucks all the air out. And there was one part where a body didn't get sucked out, but it was just about to, and it kind of flew into the screen and like bounced off of something, and it was just a dead body floating in space. I was like, oh, that's cool. It was just you know, it, it was brought to life a little bit, so, surprised me, but didn't blow me away, haven't played Call of Duty since Black Ops 2, so, when I see him, I'm like, you know, I haven't, I didn't play the last one, so, I could play one now, and it would still entertain me, compared to people who've been keeping current, and it's like, this is just like the last one, even though they're all pretty much the same, I haven't played, like, the futuristic ones at all yet, so, I can jump right into this, and I probably actually have a really good time, at least story mode-wise, if it's not just four hours long, which they typically are. But, kind of caught me off guard. I actually enjoyed it. It comes out this year, of course. Uh, number nine, which some people might hate me for having it so low, it's Crash Remastered. Um, love Crash Bandicoot. I still have two and three. Um, love playing those. I, if we saw more gameplay, it might have put it up higher on the list. Or if we saw any gameplay, actually, it might have put it higher. But... You know, they're basically being remade. Like, I know he said remastered, which kind of has me worried, because if they're being remastered from the ground up, that basically just means they're being completely remade, for the most part, because I know there's some bit of code. I don't, you know, I don't do coding, so I know they use remastered and not just remade. So there's something they're doing with it where it'll look similar, but considering it's not like, oh, this is a PS2 game being remastered for PS4, or... You know, PS2 for PS3 or PS3, you know, for PS4. This is from PlayStation 1, basically one of the first games. Like, the first Crash Bandicoot is one of the earliest games on the first PlayStation. So it's like, they're going from PlayStation 1, early PS1, to now, you know, PS4. So it's basically just three remakes, which I love. But we got that Skylanders footage, and I thought Crash looked great in that. I was like, alright, if they even look like this pretty much that's that's great that's all we need that looks perfect to me so excited for it but it's like you know it's games i've played it, yeah i've played all three i beat two and three i never owned the first one so i love to do that wouldn't hate you know having trophy support i'm just curious what trophies they make for you know the crash games so that idea as well just got me it's crash bandicoot as well just how could you not like it would be the same if they did spyro which i might be more excited for spyro because i just just from what I remember, it took me longer to play Spyro. I feel like they, it may have just been longer, but I was also much younger. But Spyro was like the first game ever where I did like the 100% type thing. And it was like me and my cousin working together. So both of those, it's just, it's Crash and Spyro. They've always had like that exact same place. So it's cool to see Crash. Maybe we'll get Spyro. He was in Skylanders like as soon as that came out, but we never really got anything extra. But. Love the idea. Thought that was great news. Uh, my number eight is actually Detroit Become Human. I didn't know that they had a trailer out for this game already, which actually spawned from the really old footage from like when PS4 first came out, the car stuff, where it was this random robot girl being put together, and then she realized that she was like alive, and she didn't want to be taken apart. That was actually created or like transitioned into this game. So. I didn't know that. I didn't know that I have to like go and watch that first trailer, but this was technically the second one, and I guess the first you know, really big trailer, but I enjoyed it. I never really played any of those games. I played like a demo of Heavy Rain, and I enjoyed it. Um, never even demo you know, Beyond Two Souls, but they've done the detective thing, they've gone into the supernatural thing, and now they're going into the futuristic thing, so it actually had me excited, and I'm a sucker for androids. Like, I think it's just a cool concept, you know, androids going rogue, the prejudice against androids and how, like, the mother, who she, she was super freaked out that it wasn't a human doing it, maybe because of how they're, you know, they're androids, so they're super calculating, and it's not like, hey, 
calm down to this or that. It's just like, don't do this. So, you know, I, I think that idea is pretty cool. Um, being from Detroit, I thought it was cool to actually see the city. And it, they actually had at least two, you know, of our famous buildings. They have the Renaissance Center, which is, for people not from Detroit, the building that has, like, the blue rings on the top in the trailer. Um, so the Renaissance Center and the building that has, like, the four points on it, those are always, like, the two buildings people show if they, like, CG some stuff. And it's like, let's CG in the Renaissance Center and that building. And those are, like, the buildings they do, unless they're actually, you know, in Detroit. So thought that was cool. Not going to get it just because it's, you know, my city. But I am curious uh, what parts of the city they took pictures of. We have, you know, Midtown, which is where Wayne State University is. So... There's a lot going on there. I'd love to see them do pictures of that because that's like kind of where the city currently is kind of regrowing from with a little, bunch of little businesses. So I'd like to see what they do with that and just kind of where they take things. And it actually kind of interests me. Like I said, the Android stuff that actually looked pretty good. Um, it has full VR, so that's pretty cool too, I guess, you know, if you care about VR. But I, I thought it looked pretty cool. I actually thought it was pretty interesting making decisions like the other games that they've made, but it seemed pretty cool. I'm sure you lose some characters if you make the wrong choice. Maybe if you screw up too much as the um, android that was in this um, trailer, like if you screw up too many cases, maybe it's like, you suck, you get disassembled or something like that. But it caught my interest, so I was like, yeah, I, I might actually pick that one up this time. I always liked the idea of their games, but it was never like, I want that. But for this one, with the future tech and the Android stuff, it's like, I think that's a cool idea. Maybe they'll do like an Android revolution or something where you have to try to stop it. Who knows? Um, number seven for me, once again with VR, it's actually Star Wars VR. I'm not even going to bother talking too much about this. I'm a sucker for Star Wars. Future stuff, Star Wars, Back to the Future, and zombie stuff. Star Wars VR looked great. I also was surprised. I didn't think we'd get any footage on this because they, during EA, they did like their Star Wars showcase thing and there was a glimpse of that inside of the TIE Fighter or inside of the X-Wing. And so I was like, oh, that looked really great, especially visually. And then we actually got like, you know, a full trailer of it. So it just really surprised me and it was Star Wars and it was VR of Star Wars. So I loved it and that's why it's number seven. Um, number six, which once again kind of like Crash, people might be mad it's so low, it's actually Kojima's Death Standing game. Thought it looked great. Um, cool to see Norman Reedus, they actually stuck together. Guillermo del Toro is not helping out on this one, but they might make something in the future, which I think would be great. But the reason it's only number six, it's just the first trailer. It's just that weird, creepy vibe to it. Norman Reedus woke up, there's a baby attached to him by a black umbilical cord, which disappears when the baby vanishes. Then we see the little scar on his stomach, like a, you know, a cross section. Don't know what that means, because it's not like... I mean, I don't know. I, maybe men can have babies in this universe, but it's not like full-grown babies, because if they cut it out, they would just do a C-section, which is just a straight line down. And I know that because my mother had that. That's the only reason I know that. But you wouldn't have a cross-section for that. But in this universe, maybe it's different. Maybe that was a clone of him. Who knows? Like, his belly button was gone specifically, so it was, you know, with the umbilical cord and everything. Maybe that was a clone of him or something crazy like that. Wakes up, he's nude, he's got the future handcuffs on, dead fish, dead crabs, dead whales, death standing. So it's a creepy thriller. It's Kojima. Don't need to even wonder if I like it because it's Kojima. So, but that's why it's six. It's just the very beginning, not much to it. But Kojima Productions' first game, can't wait to see it. Number five for me, um, another thing I'm a sucker for, Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man and I love Wolverine. They're my top two characters in comics. And Insomniac is doing a Spider-Man game. You wouldn't think I, anyone would really care. But first off, it's Insomniac. They do comedy well, and Spider-Man is one of the best characters in all of comics to do comedy for. Very serious story when he's Peter, but when he's Spider-Man, he's freaking hilarious. So, they could do a lot with that. They do, you know, the crazy weapons, Ratchet and Clank, um, not for a while now, but Resistance when they were doing that. It's much more, far more dramatic and sad. I, I wish they would do it for, I've been waiting for another resistance just to end the whole franchise because they do the whole war thing and it always ends like the war is still ongoing the world might end and humans might lose 
I was like, I wish they would just end the story and humans win or lose. I'd hate that, but if humans win and, and you know, resistance is done. But back to Spider-Man, I'd, I'd love to see it. And the reason it hit number five was the one scene with Spider-Man running through the building and he's jumping over desks and flipping over people and he jumps through the window. Like, I saw that and I was like, I, I need this game. It just looked too fluid to me to say whatever. It, it just looked beautiful to me seeing it happen. A lot of the other stuff looked kind of like the other, the last Spider-Man games that were made, Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. And, you know, he's like, flying really fast and stuff it doesn't look like they're taking those same mechanics where they do the slow motion thing in midair but it just looked really cool like i was just like man it looks really good um love the costume i thought it was pretty sweet the, the white spider instead of the normal black spider um my girlfriend didn't like it she thought it looked too american flag with the red white and blue i, I thought that was a ridiculous complaint personally i thought it just looked really sweet it made me think of um the Alex Ross costume that you can actually unlock in the PlayStation 1 or PS2 um, Spider-Man movie game, which has such a weird tie into that movie, but hopefully it works. I hope that it's a really good Spider-Man game. The last one, which I'm pretty sure was Amazing Spider-Man 2, wasn't so great. Somehow they made the sequel worse than the Amazing Spider-Man 1 video game, which everybody loved, but they screwed up with the sequel somehow. And, you know, it has an up and down track record. He's got a million movies. Some people are already tired of that. He's got like 18 times more games. But I personally like him. But we haven't had like a really great one in a while. Because um, it's always, typically it's only with the movie. So this will really be the first one in probably like six or seven years that wasn't tied into a movie. Actually, because it was Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. And I guess the one out before that was... um like the Spider-Man 2099 game, and I can't remember the name of that one, but I guess that was only, I guess that wasn't so long ago, but, you know, the last couple of games haven't had the greatest reviews. If you look at the last four, Shattered Dimensions, the sequel with the 2099, um, Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, I think only Amazing Spider-Man 1 got, like, really great reviews. Everything else was, like, mediocre to bad, and then before that was, like, Web of Shadows, which I love, but didn't get the greatest response and then maybe it wasn't really great going all the way back to like until it was the um spider-man 2 game which everybody loves because it was perfection but hopefully it's really great insomniac does great freaking games so i hope it works it looks beautiful to me and it's a spider-man so it kind of just it gets me uh number four is actually days gone this one really surprised me because when I first, when they did the trailer early on in the press conference, I didn't really care. I was like, it looks okay, but it looks like it's a post-apocalyptic biker gang video game. It's like, okay, he's with his gang members. He lost his girlfriend. It, it looked, it was kind of clear that something was weird because it was like no technology. They weren't in the city. They were always like in camps or just on the road. So it's like, it's clear it's like sort of an apocalyptic thing or there's like no technology or something like that something happened and you could tell especially with the titles like days gone it wasn't just like oh he just lost her and he's with his biker gang but it seemed like it was just they were on the road and trying to survive the the post-apocalyptic world against other gangs and other you know random people and then they really surprised me at the end of the conference with the gameplay of it and they threw in like monsters like the crazy world war z um zombies and i fell in love with the game i was like holy crap i i definitely want to play this now and it was more for the fact that they changed how i saw zombies because everyone's you know there are tons of different types of zombies fast and slow but i have not seen a game do fast zombies like all the zombies are coming at you like that except for left for dead and it was just a totally different experience because that's like they can get right up to you no big deal you can be surrounded by a bunch of them and you can sometimes fight your way out of it but this like even with zombies left for dead is like an action game this was pure horror this was like i saw him run from what had to be hundreds of zombies or like over a hundred zombies and they're piling over each other when he runs under the train and they like they have a weight to them and i love that and they like broke through the thing and he's shooting at them and he's taking out a ton of them and they're just piling over each other it's like you know he's taking out a bunch of zombies but it's almost like he's not because there's so many coming at him through the ones that are falling 
it's like he didn't hit any of them. And it's like, I love that idea where it's like, I know I just took out like 50 of them, but it looked like I didn't hit a single one because the, the mass kept moving. And when he, you know, pulled the gate down and then they, you know, they burst into that and they have weight to them and they walk over like there's a ton, there were too many on like the wooden part of the floor or something and it broke. And I was like, I love that. Like that just the way they use the weight of the zombies and realistically what would happen it made me fall in love with it instantly. Like, I, I love zombies, and the fact that they made them really matter to the world and not just, oh, they'll kill you when they get to you. It's like, no, they destroy the world as well. That mattered to me. And it looked like even the metal bridge that he was on at the end bent a little. I couldn't tell because there were so many freaking zombies falling around. I was like, I think it bent, but I, I don't, I couldn't really tell. But love that so excited for it um when he went into the car he also made he took something out of the car and made a little suppressor so lots of little things you can find so i thought that was actually kind of cool um but that's my number four had me really excited number three off the top god of war for it love that um and it was funny when they were doing the music i'm like this reminds me of some game i'm like i feel like i've heard this song before but it sounded different because they changed the theme per god of war game and they brought out God of War. It's not God of War 4. I wrote that because I just assumed that's what they were going to call it. But they call it God of War. I assume it's after the fact. It's older Kratos. It's dad again Kratos, which I thought was very interesting. And I wrote this down. I was like, is that his birth son? Because his son, you know, he could just be that type of dad because his son kept calling him yes, sir. So I was curious if that, if he was even, if, if the boy knew, like, this isn't my birth dad, but he raised me or he's helping to raise me. Or if he, he joined, you know, he like this, he married this woman and that's her son. But that was cool. Um, yeah, I mentioned the soundtrack like that because I noticed it. But one thing that was interesting, when they were going through, it said like you discovered this thing. So it makes me wonder if it's open world. And it was just like, you know, you discovered this. They're going very Viking, which I actually loved. When they started it, which I think that part might not be the beginning of the game either. But I love that junk when he's fighting and the creatures are like wood lava creatures, which I thought was really sweet. And he threw the axe, which first I thought was cool in general. It's like, oh, you can throw weapons. And then he was fighting with his fist and he was destroying that thing. And then it was like, all right, let's go. And he uses like, he's like Thor. And it's just like, boom, and it flies back to him. I was like, that's freaking sweet. And it had it, it was glowing because it has um, it's an ice elemental weapon. So we got to see two weapons, and he gave the bow that the bow and arrow his son had. It, it might be the bow, or it could have been the arrows. But they were, like, electric, if I remember right. So I was like, this is sweet. This is freaking amazing. It looks beautiful. Bearded Kratos is interesting. The voice is different, you know, because he's older. And, and that's why I assumed he was older as well, because the voice sounded older. But I loved everything I saw from that. Visuals were great still pretty crazy it wasn't super bloody because the creatures didn't actually bleed but if that was a dude that he was punching against that like against the tree or like the the tree trunk that would have been so much blood but it was really crazy and i love the way it looked we got to see a boss he like punched that freaking thing with his bare hand i was like yep that's, i don't understand it but he just has super strength but loved how that looked just interesting very viking like i just can't wait to see what they do with that. I'm very excited. I haven't played a God of War game since 3. Um, you know, I've seen the other ones. I've played demos of some of the other ones, but I didn't, you know, I was never, I never really cared that much. But this, if it really is like a continuation of the main story, and that's kind of why I didn't care so much. I was like, I don't really care too much about the intricals and stuff. They're still cool God of War games, but I want the next one, and I think this is it. So that's my number three. I loved it. Number two, uh, I'm going to probably have to try to shoot through this, but number two is Horizon. Um, the, you know, kind of walking through the world, it's officially an open world game, which I figured it was anyway. They had the weapon wheel, uh, you salvage parts, which I believe that was something as well in the original um, gameplay we saw. There were real animals in this trailer, or in the gameplay that we saw, which were not targeted, so that was interesting. There are open world encounters where um, they actually, in, during the gameplay, saved a random guy. There were dialogue options, which really surprised me. So that I thought was kind of cool. You can get information in the world. Um, the red creatures are corrupted, which means they're even crazier, I guess. Maybe even stronger, possibly, or faster. Um, really huge map. When they did the pause screen, I was like, that's a really big map. You can convert creatures, which you can actually ride as well. Um, 
destructible environments when she fought like the crazy the final boss thing it threw a rock and it destroyed like that entire house um you can ride and shoot at the same time which was awesome and when she beat it at the end she was like this machine looks ancient the most recent trailer that came out which when i was watching every time i had to reload it was either this stupid gillette razor commercial or it was a horizon new dawn because they kept showing like the five second thing that trailer actually says a lot about the story which i didn't know um until i saw the full version so i'm gonna have to check that out because i missed some of it but check out that full trailer which they don't actually play during any of the press conference but check out the full trailer that was recently uh released it talks a lot about the main character is an outcast and where she comes from and it shows some of the extra new technology uh that wasn't even shown off in the gameplay so really excited for that game loved it it was my number one last year i remember I think everybody's still super excited. I hope that it lives up to the hype because it looks beautiful. It, I just can't wait to play that. Um, some honorable mentions here. Last Guardian, never really been that interested, so I didn't care. But October 25th, that's great because I know people love that. PS uh, VR, not too interested, um, but you know, it's $300. That's a lot. Uh, officially right now at least 50 games there's Batman VR which I assume is going to be on there that was cool love Batman uh, Final Fantasy 15 same thing as before I mentioned this I think it was um, the Ubisoft one or Microsoft footage just didn't look as cool riding chocobos that was awesome um, using VR but you play as prompto only the guy with the handgun so that was cool um, Lego Star Wars it was just funny so I like that number one flat out Resident Evil 7 that was all there was to it I saw it I loved it comes out next year blew my mind comes out in january full vr only thing is that it's first person only uh, that is confirmed uh, i i was looking up information because of course when it first came out i was like this i thought it was um i thought it was outlast because outlast 2 has had a demo come out recently for like gamers and um let's play and stuff like that so i just thought it was that because i've seen pics and it looked like it was in a barn and stuff i was like okay this is outlast 2 and i was like maybe it's not outlast and when he was before he even got downstairs i was like was that ada on the phone and i was like this can't be you know it can't be resident evil 7 goes through everything happens it's freaking resident evil 7 lost my mind um of course everyone you know a lot of people complaining and hating that it's first person i don't like that it's first person to be totally honest because i feel like that's too much of a change and really going after like the pt stuff and of course it looks that way but it can look that way without being first person and almost being feeling you know exactly like it but looking forward to playing the demo it's not out just yet it's currently 256 i haven't checked in like an hour or two so i'm gonna check after this but resident evil 7 i didn't care about anything after that i even i literally missed this game that came right after but this is probably gonna cut off but by the way i want to know what you guys thought about this one so please comment below let me know and thanks for watching i'd say more but this is gonna cut off in a couple seconds but Resident Evil 7, I hope it lives up, I hope it works, but rearrange my list, make your own, and like I said, of course, thank you guys for watching. Also, there will be a full video on RE7 if you're interested, so anything you want to say about it, save it for that, because trust me, I'll be doing a full Resident Evil 7 video, but thank you guys for watching.